Good morning, everyone. The title of my presentation today is Promoting Climate Activism Using Social and Emotional Learning Skills. I am Kaviri from New Delhi, India, and currently a second year student in the Graduate School of International Peace Studies at Soka University, Japan. My research focus is combining environmental education and social and emotional learning to encourage concrete activism, rethinking formal education. What kind of a world do we envision for ourselves and our future generations? Surely it is one where there are no immediate threats and concerns that threaten the very survival of humankind, where there are enough resources for one and all. A world that is green, thriving and abundant when it comes to natural resources. In the past three years alone, we have witnessed several large-scale natural disasters that are all because of the increasing effects of rapid climate change. From wildfires and hurricanes in the US, to earthquakes in Turkey and Greece, to the Australian bushfire, floods and typhoons in Indonesia, cyclones in India and Bangladesh, volcanic eruptions in the Philippines, to locust worms in East Africa and South Asia. With large-scale deforestation and desertification, the intensity and frequency of natural calamities have increased. Also, with increased pollution, the respiratory diseases are becoming higher unlike ever before. Food and water scarcity, malnutrition and poverty levels are gradually leading to an unmanageable public health crisis. Rapid effects of climate change could potentially lead to another world war over resources and a rise in the level of migration leading to climate change refugees. Through climate activism, we can achieve the SDG goals related to poverty, hunger, good health and well-being, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, reduced inequalities, sustainable communities, responsible consumption and production, life below water, and life on land. In her book, The Future We Choose, Surviving the Climate Crisis, Christiana Figueres writes, and I quote, climate activism is our shared responsibility and commitment, and we need to tackle it urgently. Hence, it becomes crucial to cultivate mindsets, advance with stubborn optimism, and constantly remind ourselves that we are not powerless or too small to make a difference. We must do the best we possibly can. Soka University founder Dr. Daisaku Ikeda writes, and I quote, Unlike political and economic programs, educational initiatives do not bear fruit immediately. Thus, it is hard to convince people of their importance. But in the long term, education cannot be overlooked as a key to bringing stability and prosperity to society. I unquote. Now coming to environmental education. As stated by UNESCO, one of the great challenges is to have students and teachers understand the interrelatedness of the environment, society, and economy, and have this interrelatedness be evident in their teaching and their lives as community members. Addressing environmental education will require teachers to think about their profession from a different perspective and learn skills that perhaps teachers in previous eras did not learn or use. My argument is that when it comes to environmental education, there is a mismatch between theory and practice. It is imperative that we ask how sustainable in fact is the education for sustainability. Thus, it becomes crucial to identify the gaps between theory practice and rhetoric reality and further question how successful or meaningful the current curriculum and pedagogy are and how can they be improved. Next, moving on to the challenges. Environmental education is still rarely represented in university programs. It can still be taught as a specific topic in the framework of highly specialized degrees, but beyond these sporadic cases, a real integration of environmental education in higher education can only be achieved through policies at the government or at the university level, fostering the development of interdisciplinary courses on sustainable development and sustainable consumption. 
there are three main obstacles to developing appropriate pedagogical approaches and tools. The first one being the conceptual level, the second at the didactic level, and third at socio-cultural level. The concept of sustainable consumption itself is perceived as difficult to translate into people's daily reality. Didactic resources are fragmented, sometimes based on outdated scientific data or models not adapted to real life and student experiences. And students tend to express this illusionment, passivity, and a sense of powerlessness that makes it difficult to create the motivation for them to become actors of change. To become successful, multi-stakeholder cooperation and collaboration between researchers, lecturers, social economic actors, NGOs, and businesses to cooperate with universities to develop courses in the framework of professional and lifelong learning are needed. It poses problems for teachers who do not have either the content or the pedagogical background that is at the same time interdisciplinary, outdoors oriented, community oriented, problem inquiry oriented, and action oriented. It is internationally recognized that environmental education must address knowledge, awareness, skill, attitude, and participation objectives. Much of the literature on environmental education encapsulates this range of objectives into three broad categories or forms. The first one, education in the environment. Second, education about the environment. And third, education in um, education for the environment. Notions of sustainability education have not yet gained credibility within mainstream education, including teacher education and curriculum development. Within the literature of the field, there remains a deep discontent and understandable impatience amongst the environmental educators concerning a lack of progress in penetrating the ideology of mainstream educational systems. What then is the solution? I propose social and emotional learning. Now, what exactly is social and emotional learning? CASPEL, or the Collaborative for Academic, Social and Emotional Learning, a leader of the SEL movement since first introducing the term over two decades ago, defines social and emotional learning as an integral part of education and human development. It is the skill-based approach or process through which students and young people acquire and apply the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to develop healthy identities, manage emotions, and achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain supportive relationships, and make responsible and caring decisions. The five core competencies are self-awareness skills, self-management skills, social awareness skills, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. How do you feel after watching uh, these pictures? What kind of emotions do they elicit? Are you sad, anxious, angry, afraid, or do you feel helpless? That's the emotions that these images elicit, right? I looked at the course description and curriculums of the top universities that offer environmental education courses and programs. Rarely do any of them mention education for sustainable development, education for sustainable consumption, and or social and emotional learning. Now, what are the benefits of combining environmental education and social and emotional learning? By integrating the pedagogy and tools of social and emotional learning in environmental education curriculums, the student will become socially aware of the environment crisis, make responsible decisions henceforth to combat climate change, and forge strong relationships with like-minded individuals and encourage each other to participate in concrete climate action. They will be able to strengthen the values of justice and equity honesty and trustworthiness, integrity and altruism, respect for nature and the planet, and the golden rule of reciprocity. Environmental educators demand much more than simplistic, token environmental-related activities added on to already existing programs or nature-based outdoor activities and studies 
that do not raise any larger questions about personal and social goals with the environment in mind. Environmental education organized across the curriculum is intended to build the knowledge and skills to look critically at social environmental problems, including their root causes. Students should systematically build research and action skills in learning how to participate thoughtfully in working towards these solutions. They should learn along with their teachers to work across disciplinary boundaries and engage in real world community problem solving and decision making towards democratically based improvements in conditions around quality of life issues. There are several cases and examples of an SEL approach to environmental education, but only at the elementary and middle schools level across the US and Canada. Independent teachers, environmental organizations, and NGOs are successfully using an SEL pedagogy and witnessing remarkable transformation in the beliefs and attitude of the students. A blend of early childhood education, environmental education, and social emotional development under the SEED framework, which stands for Social Emotional and Environmental Education Development, has shown significant results. Then, why not incorporate such an approach or a framework for higher and university level education? Conclusion We talk the talk, but do we really walk the walk? By incorporating an uh, SEL approach to environmental education, pedagogy, and curriculums, students who are enthusiastic about climate activism can unite together, renew their determination to fight against climate change and create a green and thriving world. It is crucial to create a new generation of learners who take concrete climate action willingly before it's too late. So these are the references that I took uh, to prepare my presentation. That's it, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Kaveri. All right, so if you have any questions, please uh, take some notes or remember them and we'll put them after we have the set. Okay, thank you. Uh, I mean, are you ready for your presentation now? Yeah. Okay, now let me share my screen. Oh, sorry, I'll 